and the observed counts are given to me, my job is to come up with the expected counts. So this is done beautifully on this page, but I don't know what page it is. Hang on. Page 9. If you look at the second table on page 9, look at this table and then let me explain it. So to come up with the expected counts, I have to take my row total. So I'm interested in this cell, let's say, right? I'm interested in the expected count for Republican and male. So I'm going to take my row total, which is 400, divide by the grand total, which is 1,000, and then multiply by the column total, which is 450. So you see me do that here. To come up with this cell, I would take this divided by this, which is really the probability of male, and then I'm applying that to given Republican. Let, let me explain this a little better. So probability of male is equal to 400 over 1,000. And I want this probability to remain 0.4 for probability of male given Republican, which would be this over that. 180 over 450. So whatever cell I'm about to come up with here divided by 450 should be equal to this probability 400 over 1000. And if that is the case, then it would mean that male and Republican are independent because probability of male given Republican is equal to the probability of male. You follow me? This is the rule. If you, re if you recall, here is the rule for independence, right? Probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. And if that's the case, it would mean that B had no impact on A, and therefore A and B are independent. Are you with me? Or no association between A and B, i.e no association. So under this assumption, I want the probability of male, which is the total probability of male, which is 400 over 1,000, to be the same as the probability of male given Republican, which is this unknown cell, some cell that I don't know, divided by 450. So when I set these equal, I see that I can solve for this cell by saying 400 over 1,000 times 450. That's where this formula comes from. That in order to find the missing cell, you have to take the row total divided by the grand total times by the column total to come up with this 180 number. Are you with me? Let's do the next one. So I would want probability of male to be the same as the probability of male given Democrat. And in order for that to work out, I would have to take 400 over 1,000, which is 0.4, and multiply that by the total number of Democrats, which is 450. And that's how I would come up with this number. But here the numbers are the same, so I really didn't have to do this over because nothing's changed. This is still 400, this is still 1,000, and this is still 450. So again, I get 180. For this one, I do 400 over 1,000 times 100, which gives me 40. You follow? I'm setting up the proportions such that this holds because the assumption is under the null hypothesis, we have independence, which means that 
the probability of male in this case is equal to the probability of male given Republican, male given Democrat, and male given Independent. Follow or not? Who's confused? Let me know right now and I'll make it better. You mean it's totally clear? Okay, so in that case, I come up with my expectation matrix, which is right here, and then I still have to create my chi naught test statistic, which now is given by a double summation because it's over rows as well as columns. Before there was only one summation sign, I, was, I only had one row with K categories when I was doing the goodness of fit test. But now I'm doing a test of independence and I have a R by C matrix so this would go over all rows and all columns. The formula is exactly the same as it was before. So I say 200 minus 180, square it, divide by 180, plus 150 minus 180, square it, divide by 180, plus 50 minus 40, square it, divide by 40, and so forth. Are you with me? Yes? Yes or no? And I get a chi-square test statistic of 16.20. Then, let's do it here. Page 9, was it? Page 9. The chi naught square test statistic <coughs> is equal to 16.20. And I have R minus 1 times C minus 1 degrees of freedom, where R is the number of rows, C is the number of columns. So I have two rows, so 2 minus 1, and three columns. 3 minus 1. So 1 times 2 is still 2 degrees of freedom for this problem as well. So chi-square, 2 degrees of freedom. Alpha 0.05 was given. Notice I put the whole alpha in the right tail. I go back to my chi-square table and 0.05 and 2 degrees of freedom is 5.991. That's my critical value. And my test statistic is 16.20. So that falls in the rejection region. 16.20. Falls in the rejection region. So this time, reject H naught, which says that there is independence between gender and voting preference. So there is a significant association between these variables. That's the conclusion. If we wanted to find the p-value, this would be chi-square CDF, 16.2 comma infinity comma degrees of freedom. This is the p-value. It's very small compared to alpha. P less than alpha. Reject H naught. So let's mark up a bunch of things in your notes so that it's clear what the important things are. So if we go to page 6, let's begin there on page 6.
The null and the alternate hypothesis will be these. There is no association, meaning independence for the null hypothesis versus there is an association or a relationship. The degrees of freedom will always be R minus one times C minus one because you are given a R by C matrix. So let me just show you on the matrix why that's the case. In an R by C matrix, such as this one, here I have an R by C matrix. These two are free choices because the row total has to stay constant. So this one is not a free choice. And then the same thing with the columns. If the total of the column has to stay this number, then one of them is a free choice and this one is not a free choice or vice versa. So C minus one are free choices looking down the column and R minus one are free choices looking down the row. So in all, I have R minus one times C minus one degrees of freedom. That's where that comes from. Then the other thing that's necessary to know is that all the expected counts should be greater than or equal to five, or as we said before, 80% of them should be greater than or equal to five, and all counts greater than or equal to one. So mark that up in your notes. And then the, to find the expected number, you do row total, divided by grand total times column total. And then on the next page, it gives you what the chi test statistics should be, chi naught. And on the bottom of page eight, it gives you the calculator commands for, for you to do this on the calculator. So if you don't want to do this by hand, do it on the calculator where the calculator finds the expected matrix for you. Let's do it for our matrix. So it says go to second matrix edit A. Let's go there. Second. matrix, which is right here, edit, and A. Just hit enter. So now it's giving you a place where you can input the size of your matrix. My matrix for this problem is 2 by 3, right? Look here. My matrix is 2 rows three columns. So I will create a space for that. Put it in here. Two by three. Hit enter. So now it gives you a place to input the two by three matrix that you have. And now we're going to put the observed matrix in. So it says here, enter the observed counts. And you go across the row. So getting back to my matrix, I'm going to go put these numbers in. 200, 150, 50, 250, 300, 50. Then go back to here. Stat test, chi square test. Stat test, chi square test. It's letter C on my calculator. Hit enter. Observed is A, just hit enter. Expected is B, just hit, just hit enter. It will create an expected matrix for you.